All right, I'm going to take a few minutes and review this microphone preamp right here. It's a scratch built, self designed. A lot of the components are used. There's only one new part on it, actually. Everything else has been modified or pulled out of a piece of junk. But I want to go ahead and show what it can do and explain my particular design which is a little odd because I'm running a very low plate current to put the gain curve on a fairly nonlinear portion of the of the gain curve for a 12AX7 preamp tube but you'll see that it's actually not bad um, especially considering the amount of gain it has before it distorts especially for my purposes that'll never really be a problem it's just going to be used as a tube preamp to kind of get that vintage soft sound that you know you can't get with today's transistorized stuff but anyways let me uh, show this thing off here all right, right now I've got a one kilohertz signal going into the input here on this XLR. And I've got the output. Right now it's just dangling free. It's not really looking at anything. Right now what I'm looking at though on the oscilloscope right there is this signal right here. And this is what I'm sending to the grid of the first stage on this 12AX7 based preamp and you can see right here let me see if I can show you on the scale if you look at the scale it'll focus in there it goes I'm on the 0 0.01 scale and my uh, probe is set for times one so these readings will come directly off of the gradient I've got two gradients of deflection peak to peak so that tells me I've got a 0 0.02 volt signal which is um, you know in simpler terms 20 millivolts so I've got a 20 volt 20 millivolt input signal let's see what comes out of the output so I'm going to disconnect to that grid signal tie in that output signal this is after two gain stages bring that way down let me see if i can get that to sync up a little better yeah that's a little better um now then you can see that i'm on the two volt scale and with 20 millivolts coming in i've got Come on, I've got it on a, a cycling sine wave that kind of lasts for a minute and then cuts off. But let's see, one, two, three, four, four gradients at two volts, so that's eight volts of um, output for a 20 millivolt input. You can do the gain calculation that yourself or a I'll do that later when I get the schematic out and we look things over how I arrive at what I've done. But you can see here, I want to turn this gain up now. All I've done is I've taken the that signal that's coming in and I'm bringing it up. You can see how tremendously large that signal is now at halfway up on the scale with a 2 millivolt signal you'll see that I'm starting to peak out on the top it's starting to clip that signal I can really overdrive it and you'll see um, you can see how it's clipping the top off well at the point that it does that we can look again I'll put the uh, input signal back onto it and um, we'll be able to see at what voltage that thing is 
causing that to overdrive. Okay, it starts to overdrive. I got it on the point one scale, one you know direct reading off of the gradients. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. I got a 500 millivolt signal, which is a half, half a volt. Half a volt drives it into complete saturation and clipping. But what's interesting is that a half a volt, which um, starts that clipping, If you'll see here, it's on the 20 volt scale. That thing would focus in. There it goes. 20 volt scale, so that gives me um, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 20, 40, 145 volts. That's quite a bit of gain. A half a volt in giving you. 145 out that's pretty damn good and it's only mildly distorted um, and that and all I have to do is just back off on that signal just a little bit and there it is you know so we're talking like 450 millivolts for a 140 volt output now then some of the features of this amplifier are let me see if I can get this to focus in. The only new component on here is that capacitor, that dual 50 microfarad capacitor. I've got it running as my rectifier filter for that guy right there, which is a 6x4. It's a 6.3 volt filament high voltage rectifier high voltage you know 300 volts or so I'm only running about 280 volts and this trans this is my input transformer now this is a weird thing here that's that's a homemade transformer and by homemade I don't mean I wound it but what I did was I've got a peerless transformer that I've got in an Altec 1567 uh, a tube mic preamp. I'll show that later on when I get my studio built. But the transformers for that thing, you can get them on eBay for about $250. Well, this thing here costs about, um, I think it was $20. And no, heck, it wasn't even that. It was. You can see it right there, the MIT-435. All that is is it's a, it's a low impedance to high impedance transformer. It's usually used on guitars so that you can plug a guitar, you know, directly into a high impedance input or, or vice versa. Well, I just took it out of the package and I got this old octobase socket right there you see it what I did was this thing right here is a relay for I mean this container is used to have a relay in it that was used on an HVAC system to uh, switch you know the thing you know the compressor on and off but um, I took that joker out and I and you can see it killed the signal. That's actually going through my modified input transformer. Because I got a couple of other transformers that don't have 50K output. That's really important because any transformer that has less than that, the gain drops off tremendously and you get all kinds of weird artifacts on that grid, the input grid of that first tube stage and it just acts funny but there it is that's the old 12ax7 let me see if I can zoom in on it 
that's that tube right there on the corner back there there it goes it's cleaning up it's trying to but um I had to go through a couple of those before I found one that works sufficient um but anyways I'll get the uh, schematic out now and we'll go over that and you can see the kind of unorthodox you know design I put into it um and I'll explain a little bit more about my build as I go this chassis is made out of a Burger King menu pedestal that I um, pulled out somebody drove over it so I cut it up made this chassis a little capacitor clamp I snipped out of a piece of tin and just I got these old looking ass knobs and crap here <laughs> I took these out of some old broken transistorized equipment but it looks kind of vintage thought it would go with the style now I'll flip this thing over while it's still plugged in probably not a good idea but anyways there's my point to point um, I don't have that power supply lead ground as you can see it over there that green wire on my transformer you can see all that wax on my transformer I had to open it up and find a broken wire in it and solder it so then I put it back on it was kind of my fault <laughs> I was trying to clean the uh, transformer up I had it on a, a spinning wire brush I got it out of my hand and flew across the room and it broke one of the windings but I took it apart and fixed it and re-waxed it that right there let me get my finger pointing at it without shocking my ass I've already got shocked doing this I should unplug it but that right there that transformer right there that's, I'm using it as a choke I took a 70 volt audio transformer and um, cut all the wires off except for the one going across the uh, one that had the most windings and it uh, ended up to be a pretty decent choke I've got a pretty clean power supply although there is some hum on it but it's acceptable for a you know a tube a tube device it's you got to put a set of headphones on and kind of really listen to it but um, the uh, actual amplifier which is I'm, I know I'm going to shock myself this is crazy but anyways right down here this at the bottom there that's the uh, amplifier portion I built everything right off of the the tube base so keep all the components to a short of you know short of length as possible and then um, you can see my XLR my quarter inch foam plug right there coming in that's that we going out actually and then that little capacitor right there I had to put it in there I had some parasitic oscillations when I cranked it wide open without any input it would bust into oscillating so I had to kill that and I ended up having to modify my grid resistor I ended up putting a 51k you know resistor on the grid so that it would reduce the parasitics and I got them gone it was a slight reduction in gain but you know I ain't gonna burn up a tube with it running wide open with a oscillation going on that can ruin a tube pretty quick like if it goes unchecked because those, those oscillations will usually run full bore clipping your tube and jack that joker down boy but anyways I'll um get the schematic up on the screen here in a minute and we'll go over some of the things that I did on that so I'm going to shut it down for a little Alright, this was my original design. It didn't deviate too much from it. Just mainly appearance. But the layout of the tube sockets and the preamp um, input transformer 
power transformer. I have a metal encased transformer that I ended up using. And the dimensions are about the same, so that didn't really change. And the schematic, you can see that I've documented the plate voltages, plate currents, grid voltages, and based on those factors, you can see on the following specification sheet that based on that grid current, excuse me, the grid voltage and the plate, plate current, I drew a line and where that blue dot is it represents where the tube is setting quiescently at uh, where it is on the uh, gain linearity scale and it's not too bad it seems to be working pretty good calculated the gain based on that new input transformer and some adjustments I made to the circuit all which are shown on the schematic I'm getting a total throughput gain and this is actually even utilizing the gain of the transformer uh, I'm getting a gain of 400 so it's working pretty well and I've connected a microphone to it and I'll, once I've got the project finalized I'll do a rundown on it using a microphone and let you hear what it sounds like through an amplified system and uh, but there's still some modifications that I'll probably make to it I'm not sure if I want to run cathode bias excuse me cathode bypass capacitors to try to increase the gain a little bit more in the primary stage and um, I've got to do some electrical work on the uh, power supply I got that ground I've got to connect and a few other things so it's not completely done but it's done enough to show these things so once I've got it finished I'll go ahead and do a complete rundown on it and I'll post that too but I hope you enjoyed it